Good. Whatever part of the day it is that you're listening to us, and welcome to the Working Tools Podcast, where we're continuing continuing our discussion of ritual in Freemasonry. A uh, paper by Most Worshipful Brother Kenneth Aldridge, past Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of Quebec. Ladies and gentlemen, brethren all, welcome to the Working Tools Podcast, a casual conversation around Freemasonry. First, it's important to note that our thoughts and opinions are our own and do not reflect those of our Grand Lodge or respective craft or concordant bodies. Please connect with us and ask questions via our website at theworkingtoolspodcast.com. Good. Whatever part of the day it is again, uh, I am Worshipful Brother Jared Dunham from Penticton Lodge number 147 here in Penticton, British Columbia, and I'm joined by two out of the three other rogues that are normally with us on the show, a very Worshipful Brother David Colbeth from King Solomon number 60 in Auburn. Auburn, I always forget which okay. part of Washington you're from. And Worshipful Brother Stephen Chung from Prince Charles Lodge number 153 in beautiful Kelowna, British Columbia. And tonight we're continuing our discussion of ritual and Freemasonry, where we I think we left it off. We were trying to decide whether or not opening and closing is serious ritual, part of the ritual, important ritual. I'm not exactly sure. I think David had a point. Well, I was just wondering, is there more any any more importance of making sure that maybe degree work ritual is better quality i mean it should all be of course it should all be good quality i'm not really trying to downplay that but if we had to draw a line if we wanted to have to have an open a vein as we talked about last time <laughs> of discussion <laughs> if we had to choose a priority of ritual quality would the degree ritual be most important and then maybe opening and closing for our business meetings themselves maybe secondary still very important and then ancillary programs installations and now funerals i think we should be done with as high quality and dignity as possible of course and i'm not trying to say they're lesser but those addendum degree you know other other ritual work is there any could there be any potential priority if if you had to say i would accept an error in open and closing but i really don't want to accept an error in degree work i would say for me personally I would not accept uh, errors in opening and closing. To me, I actually feel that that's more important because it's, and, and I'm even I'm even so bad as to say I I get upset when the floor work isn't done correctly. Yeah. Like there, and do you have a so, standard for floor work? Mm, we have a standard for our lodge for floor work. <laughs> it's Custom. done slightly Custom. different, in other, but there is. But the, that's the thing is that each law I like. But it, if you're opening, if you're opening it, I mean, closing, uh, opening definitely, if you flub your opening, you, it, it's like it, you, you're setting the tone for the evening. Sure. So if you flub your opening on a degree night, then you're setting, like you're not setting the right tone for everyone else that's going to be dealing with it. You know, you, you may get someone that's, you know, worked really hard for the degree work. And if they're sitting there watching the opening and we flub it, then they're like, well, why did I put this much effort into this if they don't care about the opening? You know, and 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 your opening should be good because you do it so often. Mm -hmm. You sit there and listen to it so often. Like there, there should be no excuse for bad opening and closing ritual. What about a new person in the, moving up in the station? They should have, if they've, once again, here, okay, here comes my rant. If they can't do the chair, they shouldn't have been moved up. And if they well, haven't been in lodge, if they're a new member in lodge, they shouldn't be put into some, like my, I've always said to people, sit in lodge, watch the opening and closing. You will eventually absorb enough of it that when you have to do it yourself, it will be less difficult. Yes. So well, that, definitely. yeah. So that if you're, if someone is in, and if someone has been put into a chair, let's say like senior deacon <clears throat> who has, you know, when they were junior deacon, they really weren't paying attention to what the senior deacon did during the opening or closing of your ceremony then that but they should have you you should have if you're in the chair you should have been paying attention enough to know all the prompts and then but also whoever was in the chair before you should have should also be making sure that you know what you're doing right and failing that that's what a lodge office is yeah and failing that for, they have yeah right 
but yeah, you know, I, I totally agree with uh, Jared. All ritual is equally important. None uh, at, at any level, whether it's installation, whether it's, you know, a different, a special thing, uh, it sh- should all be treated the same. In my opinion, right. it's, it's, um, but th- this paper speaks of the impact that it has on the candidate coming through. And, uh, I've seen that impact so many times that I, I really, you know, and that one hit home with me. It's one of the pet peeves of ri- like ritual and floor work. Our floor work is in our, is in our ritual book. And, and it's, a, we're supposed to move around our lodge in a particular manner. Um, and, uh, it's not to be deviated from. So it really kills me when guys just decide, Oh, I'm just going to zigzag right across over here and, and, and go diagonally across the room. It's like, no, 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 no. What are you doing? This is not clockwise. Right. You know, and <clears throat> we go clockwise and we only go between the East in certain parts of ceremonies. And that's with an acknowledgement when you're crossing that line. Um, so to me, it's all important that way. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I cringe, but I, uh, <clears throat> I've, I've tried to take the, the road of educating someone rather than scolding them, um, for it. And, and by educating, not, not necessarily just, Hey, 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 you know, you're bringing it you know, to his attention to say, Hey, you know, like if you want to practice your work, you know, I'll make the time to help you. Cause I know there's, you know, it's supposed to be done. Right. And, and maybe somebody hasn't offered that help before. Maybe, um, they've been left to flounder on their own and, and, um, and, and they're struggling. Right. Um, you know, I've, I've taken guys under my wing to learn certain pieces, uh, from other lodges. Right. And then that, that funny Canadian work, right. Uh, I haven't got a clue. Most of that funny Canadian work, but when I, I I go and I work with somebody like that, I have their ritual in front of me and I'm helping them uh, more so learn a way to um, uh, helping them learn how to learn ritual, right? So that they can do it on their own and be more successful at it, right? Um, rather than scolding them or, you know, making from, you know, snide comments from the sidelines. I mean, once you hear somebody making snide comments from the sidelines, that really throw your game off. And, right. and I think it's bloody rude and ignorant when, but, when guys do that. Once again, the easiest way to learn your ritual is go and sit and lodge. Mm-hmm. And so which is what goes back to my old thing of r- rushing people through the chairs. Is that a new, ca- some, a new master mason should be allowed to sit and lodge for a year, watch what's going on in opening and closing ceremonies and stuff so they get a better idea of what they've gotten themselves into. Yep. You know. what, what about an evening of, uh, we call move-ups here, or step-ups, where mm-hmm. they're, they're kind of testing the waters. They may, you know, as, as master, I'm going to be master in a year and a half, and one of my quiet goals is to never open and close lodge. My goal is to have somebody else from the brethren, from, their, from the body, do those opening and closings, especially new guys, newer Masons, if you will, or people that haven't ever been in the office. Yes, they should do the work as best they can, but is it is perfection expected the first time they take that chair? Well, it all depends. Like we have our, our, our installation is in June and we go dark over the summer. So if they can't spend two months learning something, no, but we do <laughs> we, a lot of lodges here actually do do what we call a step up night. Yeah, which is, but that's just the elected, the officers or to be elected officers take the position that they're going to be going into. Yeah. But just one night. Yeah. And usually probably just one step up. Yeah. Yeah. And and so we do that in District 9. That happens pretty much in every lodge in our district. And the meeting before the installation, they call step up night and they go in and and they do the role of the person ahead of them. Right. See, ours is, um, we have a step up and then we have past master's night, which is also our elections night with the idea that the guys are stepping up to prove their ability and then they're voted on the next month. And then our installation is the month after that, which would actually make more sense to, you know, for a step up night to have more meaning is to, you know, prove their ability to, but 
at that late in the game before an installation, a month or two before installation, you know, you kind of late to be changing the players of the, of the game. Right. So, um, maybe having them being judged as per se, uh, maybe that's not such a good idea, but having them practice it for sure. I guess my original question when we came back to the segment two was related in a section. He talked about that if we perform the work is what he's talking about degree work, I think <clears throat> in that, because the way he says it, that if we don't do the quality of work, then the candidate isn't getting what he paid for. Mm. I circled paid. I, is that really what he paid for? We consider it as Masons because we're on the other side of the door, if you will. We think that's part of what he paid for, but does he, he, he doesn't know to expect that as a new candidate. I don't want to reveal, you know, I'm trying to reveal everything here on the show, but he doesn't know what to expect. And so does he, does he know Is I, that really what he paid I, for? I think what he, I think what, what, um, hold on a second. I think what, what virtual brother kind of Aldridge real, I think what he means and not so much in the sense of, you know, the economic paid for, but, when we do a poor job of ritual stumbling through it and being prompted and stuff, they're not the, the candidate isn't getting the experience that they've expected. So when I think, I think that's at least that's how I read it was that it's not that they're, they're not getting their money's worth out of the, the degree, but they're getting it poor, poor return on their expectation. I was almost said investment there, but that, that would have. <laughs> I, I, I think uh, that's probably a much better description is, is that uh, uh, it, it does set expectations too. Right. And um, uh, I think that the candidates deserve the best that we can give them in the quality of work we provide um, and their experience coming through. And, um, so I think, I think it's really important for them. And, and I would agree. I think we should do our best, but again, they don't know what is to be expected unless they've tried to cheat and gone out <clears> on the <throat> internet and found something that they maybe shouldn't have found ahead of time, which then <laughs> makes, makes, makes their experience lesser. In my opinion, I, I didn't do that. I didn't really know to do that. I was kind of ignorant. And but I know guys that have gone out and tried to learn everything they can before they join, and I think their experience is lessened because of it. But I guess I'm not trying to again, not trying to say that we shouldn't do quality work. I just is the candidate what are they expecting? You know, when when I was we're doing a, a slightly different process on our degree work than we did when I joined because we're trying to enhance the experience. So now, in my opinion doesn't have to be yours, but it should. He's getting the new candidates are getting a better experience than they did. Even when I came through as a Mason, I didn't have a bad experience. I enjoyed my experience. It was awesome. I didn't know what to expect though. And I didn't have anything else to bar it against or to frame it against, but a new guy coming through. And I guess what I'm the piece that I have a hard time with is that you go to a lodge and they unfortunately do really poor, especially degree work. And a guy doesn't get the experience that we think he should air quotes for those listening. And then that new candidate gets taken around to other lodges to see other degree work. And he's like, well, they didn't do that for me. And they didn't do that for me. And his experience is much different right within the same area because one lodge does much better or he's maybe like, oh, wow, I'm glad I didn't get my degree here. Cause that sucked. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. well you, know, you know there i've i i know guys that have taken a, a candidate and asked him to be gone through the fellow craft degree in one particular lodge because that lodge had a guy who did an amazing job on the the lecture uh and he, he combined he did both the junior deacon and senior deacons lecture and um it, it, it provides that that candidate with such an experience that um, th these these guys asked this lodge to put this degree on for the fellow. Unfortunately, the rest of the ritual sucked, but that one uh, experience of being escorted around by this guy and having 
this degree, uh, this lecture delivered so, um, it saved, uh, it saved face in the end. Oh, totally. So, right? so, but isn't, so there we go back to the language. Isn't that the purpose of, again, air quotes, standard work? We're all supposed to be doing the same work. And so, yes, the memorization and delivery, and there's all kinds of different aspects, but it, are we, should we, maybe as a question, should we try to make sure that every man's experience is at least the same or better, the, the best experience? And so is it, how do we decide? Is it fair for a guy to go into a lodge and you go, I know that lodge sucks at ritual and they're going to do a really crappy job on their degree. Should they be allowed to make masons? No, I think I, well, no, because, oh, yeah. hey, we went, we've, I, I know we've discussed this, the concept, <laughs> the concept of earning, earning your charter. We've yeah. discussed, oh, yeah, the, oh, yeah. Yeah. you know, the fact that I am surprised and it, it, I am surprised at the number of lodges that it, when you say that, like, I've talked to people about this and I said, if you guys had to prove again, prove up again as a lodge, like if you guys were a lodge under dispensation and you had to prove that you could be a full lodge which means you have to be able to do opening, closing all three degrees, everything perfectly from memory. Could you get your charter again? And a lot of them look at me like mm. freaking deer with a head in the headlight look. Exactly. And I, I think I would, I would like to see that, that fo a more focus on that concept. But don't you all have something like that with your, we have tests the, that you have in your, the, the district deputy, it, they report on how a lodge is doing. But I have never heard of a lodge having their charter pulled because their ritual well, work is bad. No, but don't you have that's your inspection, doesn't the deputy? Oh, okay, you don't have a full inspection system, either. you don't have a you proper have, full inspection, at least not that I've ever seen and not that I've ever heard of in all the years that I've been up here. Interesting, um, at least not in our district. The district deputy goes to all the meetings and they write and they report on what's going on up here, but you know, I thought I understood that you had a full like inspection where you go in and you exemplify a degree or conduct a degree. And that's kind of like the test for the year. You don't have, I thought you did. I know it's not in our district, maybe in Stevens. In our district, we are expected to uh, do each of the degrees once or exemplify it. If we don't have a candidate. Right. Uh, and that's kind of like the lodge officers rite of passage or the, you know, the worshipful masters anyway. You mean, but you mean as they're in office, they're supposed to, they're expected to do all three in their year. Yeah. And, and that's used to, it was an old, that used <clears throat> to be our standard too. Apparently they used to have to do with them, but it wasn't ever an inspection necessarily. It was just kind of a assumption, but I know in some jurisdictions I was actually trying to long time ago, we were looking at interviewing people. I was trying to get a guy to come on the show and he said, Oh, I can't come on. That's during our inspection season. He said that when, when's yours? I said, inspection season? What's that? <laughs> and that's what prompted this whole process for me to, I mean, in the blue room we were talking about, I said that I'd finally written a resolution that's going to go before the body next year to introduce a concept like that, that the, a lodge will be required to either exemplify or conduct a degree, the deputy will report on it, and then it will be up to the Grand Master whether they approve it or not. And if they don't, they'll automatically go into dispensation. Mm. That would, no, that that's would, interesting. That's not going to be popular. Solve, I think that would solve a lot of problems up here. And, and the, the beautiful thing is, and I don't know about your stand, your code, but your constitution, but our code, but you know, it has a whole section for the dispensation process. So we don't have to rewrite that. It'll just the mm -hmm. lodge. If, if, if it was so bad that the grandmaster said, sorry, they would, uh, be, they wouldn't be suspended. The charter would be suspended essentially, but they would immediately go into, into dispensation. And then the dispensation it, process takes over. It could take until next end of communication, or it could take 10 years, or they could decide to dis, dis, dissolve. But isn't going under dispensation suspending someone's charter? Essentially, yes. It, it's, it is yeah. a, 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 I don't know if I use the word suspension or not, but it's a form of suspension, basically, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, the nice thing is, originally, I want them to become a club, and then they wouldn't be able to make masons because they couldn't prove themselves, but under dispensation, that's the purpose of dispensation is to prove that you can. Right. But then also yeah. in our code, the sponsoring lodge has to vouch for them to receive the dispensation. So then, 
you know, to me, it becomes an, an, a more complex process where the sponsoring lodge has to really step up and assist them and making sure that they can continue. And anyway, we'll see. But once again, it goes back to you have to know your ritual. Yes. Which is the whole, the main point of this whole exercise is that if you don't, if you don't, if you don't know what you're doing, how do you know what you're doing is what you're supposed to be doing? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, it, it was <clears throat> only because I knew my ritual when I went to Cuba and I sat in a lodge with a totally different language, they happened to be doing the same ritual as us. Thankfully, I could follow along for most of it because, you know, I've been to lodge enough that, uh, yeah, you know, by assimilation, you, you, you can sit there and watch and know where you're at. Right. But, um, that would be an interesting, I don't know that you'll get that one passed. Uh, that'd be an interesting uh, vote to see happen uh, when you present that resolution. Yeah, I'm I'm really not expecting it to pass, but you know the I, I don't know who's going to listen to this or not in our jurisdiction. But I was I was debating. I thought I need to get my marketing together so when I get go to the mic and I can give my three minutes of presentation. And the guys I was talking to that about it, they said, "What do you mean three minutes? You get three guys, and each of them get three minutes. So they just either say what you want them to say or or direct the mic to you. You got nine minutes." <laughs> I thought, ooh, I like the way you think. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't know. I, I was one of the other parts I was thinking about was we, we talked a little bit about the comments from the sidelines and how that can be distracting. And so I don't know if we could make a whole other segment on it, but we're already like 20 minutes in here. I just right. I, I would agree with what he was writing about how whether it's bad ritual or maybe even worse, bad prompting <laughs> that is absolutely distracting and all, and it will throw a, a, a wrench into the mindset of developing unity and developing the focus for a man it, to transition. What we have said before, I think, and we agree that especially open and closing rituals to transform a man from the profane to the moment of lodge and concentration Right. And so having those bad parts and bad, rich, bad prompting can affect that. Right. Well, and that also harkens back to the paper we read on silence and solemnity in the law and is that, and it says right in our cost, you, you know, don't no talking, no nothing from the sidelines. You know, that's not your job. Your job is to sit there. If you think you can do it better than the person that's doing it, the next time the elections roll around, put your hand up. Otherwise, sit down, shut up, and let the prompter do their job. Because there's been a lot of times where the, the, the word that everyone's prompting with a different word. Yes. Because mm -hmm. they're not really paying attention to where the, the person delivering the ritual is in the ritual. You know, so, and they're, so they're remembering a different word that's supposed to come next. Mm -hmm. you know, and that just throws everything off, too. So just, yeah. Especially when you get multiple versions of the same similar work, right? Yeah. Uh, and you got different guys chiming in. It, it should be just one prompter. It should be um, well known. Like it, it got that. That's the kind of stuff got so bad at one point that our installing masters would have statements, opening statements, you know, instructing the guys not to uh, chime in. That, that there is a dedicated prompter over there. He will do his job leave him alone, nobody prompt, and <clears throat> keep the chuckling and the, and the side talk down to a minimum. Actually, I don't want to hear any of it or I'll fine you five bucks. I've, it's like it's it, it got that bad where, Pete, where these installing masters had to do this at every installation for a while just to get people to, you know, um, behave better. Yeah, if you will. And, and it not only affects the people that are trying to focus and listen, bad ritual or bad prompting, it also, as you talked about in the paper, the people that are prone to prompt have now lost focus and all they're thinking about is all the errors and how many times they can prompt and that how they can maybe, and even if a guy is a little more discreet about it, he starts to think about what he's going to say to that man when he gets up after it's opened or after it's closed and what he's going to 
whisper again, air quotes in his ear about what he did wrong. And that's a whole, that could be a whole other segment about kind advice. Is it really kind? How kind is it? You know, should he be doing it? Should he maybe be talking to the master and let the master give that? I know we're charged with as a master Mason to be able to give advice to our brother and lesser men, but boy, there's some guys that just probably shouldn't be given any advice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, there's, there's good ways to do it and not so good ways to do that. Yeah. Well, and the other thing is criticism isn't advice. Mm-hmm. Criticism is just pointing out faults. Advice is, is offering to help or seeking to find the reasons for the stumbling and stuff. So, and I guess on that note, I'd like to thank you for listening to the Working Tools podcast on behalf of Brother Colbeth, Brother Chung, and myself, and our absent brother, Apple. Apple? Yeah, Apple. I don't know why I thought it wasn't. Whatever. Um, if you like, if you like what, what, what you're hearing, you know, leave a little comment below, like, subscribe. If there's something that you think that we would love to ramble on ad nauseum about, you know, leave it in the comments below as well. So, you know, maybe we can find a paper to discuss it. And as always, thank you for your support. Thank you.